conduct research so um basically um, um like identify a problem right it's it's a problem it's like when somebody asks me uh, how to find a topic or anything we brainstorm and um, and we ask the student like what is what is that one thing that makes your heart flutter it can be their personal story or it can be any topic that they are interested in that's that's good enough right and also if they're not very clear about the topic we tell them zero in on the field uh, and later you can switch your topics so there are a lot of students who do that okay so i have a, i have many students who made it a bit personal as well i had a student who uh, had adhd and he had to take adderall or or that medicine and uh, he wanted to know why he is like that and what is the brain neurons that made him like that so he did research on the brain neurons and and adhd and how the how the chemicals help with that with the brain neurons and all that stuff i had another student um, her her brother was autistic so she wanted to um, explore if uh, the jasmine essence okay essential oil essential oil can can calm autism but it's essential oil it can it if it can really calm brain neurons so she, that was something personal for her right so they are all problem solvers i had a student shraddha who wanted to do research on um like uh, the sea uh, under the sea organisms how they help with uh, with with uh, the whole uh, healthcare system but then um, she stumbled with a lot of roadblocks in her research because this 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 a lot of cost involved in 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 doing the under underwater uh, uh ex extraction and everything and she couldn't find that many um that many uh other research uh papers to help her and she had to change it topic which is pretty fine we want students to explore and think another student uh who wanted to explore if flesh eating um organisms can cure cancer i mean i mean just just think about it's it's not we we never say it's a stupid topic it's like just think about the direction in which they are headed they they're trying to find a problem to the solution i'm sorry they're trying to find a solution to the problem right so so that's what we uh, help them explore and are and and that's why you have to work with an expert like a university professor okay it cannot be anybody else because they have to guide you into trying to solve that problem that 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 you want to right so the number one thing is identify the problem or the research topic then the preliminary research with expert guidance they'll guide them how to go about it because it's so vast right so the first few sessions are like that then they develop a hypothesis okay a hypothesis is basically their initial answer to that problem then they write the whole research paper okay and then the abstract comes in and so we have a whole process that um that we follow and uh, then we we look over it we tweak it tweak it um and 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 once we are satisfied with uh, with with uh, the paper then we submit it for publishing and um an outline is good at which time we 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 teach them how to plan what picture are you going to put there okay what what um what what data or or what graph are you going to put there okay so the picture cannot be copied and pasted i always tell my students that pictures are the one thing that you have to create on your own because that is what somebody looking at your research paper will want to take it and they'll reference you got it so we copyright the picture uh, they learned how to use uh, bio render the bio render is 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 a tool where you get all the ready made organs and everything that you need for the biomed for ai we use uh, draw.io for uh, business also we use draw.io because it's not biology so then they draw the picture and, and these kids are so smart they're so brilliant they'll figure this tool out and they will draw okay and every year i invite one of my students to come and teach 
by a render, okay? So it was Dia Menon, then it was Pramodini. They they like really mastered. They became an expert in drawing the pictures and, and everything, right? So that's how these kids are introducing them to all these tools. Now our research professors uh, who are creative writers know about that tool as well. And, um, and, and they kind of teach them uh, how to do that and submit for publishing. Another thing that we incorporate is executive functioning skills, okay? Um, I, I'll go over that tomorrow, which is the free prefrontal cortex of the brain. And we also help them with study skills and everything. So we know that the AP exams are coming up. So my um, my expert, uh, Anusha, who's the head of counseling, who runs my study skills passion project, is going to teach students. Uh, she's going to um, teach students how to prepare for the AP exam, like a little bit of strategy, like really, really helps. So we, we do a 360 degree uh, coaching counseling when it comes to research. It's not like very dry where you come and only do scientific things, okay? So identify, I'm just going to dig in deeper into each one of them. Um, it's like identifying a research topic, right? Brainstorming it with pen and paper. That's, that's what uh, students do with the professor, okay? And uh, Next, they conduct preliminary research uh, where they answer the questions, the how, the what, the why. And I told you they, they need to review like, um, like 10 to 15 um, uh, research journals. And some of them the research professor will provide, which um, is not like really um, um, available. And also we expect them to review only peer reviewed research papers. It cannot be news sources, CNN or YouTube. Okay, so that's what it is. They only have to review journals that have been approved or are well established. Okay, and then um, developing the hypothesis. Hypothesis is your initial solution to the problem. Um, and uh, we, we teach that. That's very, very important, the hypothesis. It's 250 words. Uh, we make them write the hypothesis, but they tweak a lot of, based on that. Um, and, and of course, they write their research paper completely. But when they come to thesis defense, it's not the research paper that they go over. I teach them how to present. OK, and they take the thesis defense and go and uh, show it uh, to their uh, counselors. They have to schedule a call where uh, the counselor, they go and present their thesis, the teacher, they go and present their thesis because it helps them with the recommendations. So that's something that um, we, we teach them as well. OK, and submit for publishing. It's excruciating going through uh, the submitting process. I literally stay on Zoom and I show students how to do tile by tile, uh, what to put in um, and everything in, into that so that they can submit it for publishing. We ask them to include our email so that if any questions that, that arise uh, about the research, uh, they can answer them and we can help them answer. OK. And uh, yeah, so to summarize, uh, this is this is the like the five steps. It's not as simple, but I, it, I'm summarizing it. Identifying the problem, doing uh, preliminary research, developing the hypothesis, writing the research paper, thesis defense, and then submitting for publishing. These are the five steps um, that's required um, in the research process. And benefits of a research paper, we know that, but uh, the number one benefit is um, it, it, it looks like it, it gives that authentication that it's legit. And, and when, you, when you get it approved and you put the DOI link, like I said, my students have gotten a lot of scholarships and acceptances. And the only difference that we see in their profile as compared to someone else is a published research paper. And also you can use uh, the research paper for STS Regeneron um, uh, competition, okay? Uh, you can use it for, um, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to change this. So you can use it for science fairs uh, that get conducted anywhere else. You are the author, you can um, use it uh, anytime. Uh, anywhere that's like kind of relevant uh, to it, okay?